Right, hello, hello, hello. Uh, welcome back, guys. Or shall I say welcome back to myself? It's been a while. I hope everyone's keeping safe uh, in 2021. Um, so, yeah, it's been some time. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, before I get into this, I just want to say don't worry about the fact that I'm speaking through a channel that's labeled Kick and clearly has EQ settings and various other settings for a kick drum. Um yeah, I just didn't have time to switch all of this around. But this is not really relevant to the topic today, so, you know, it doesn't really matter. Don't worry about it. Um, so, yeah, I've seen this question quite a few times. It's been asked to me, um, and I've also seen it on some of the Facebook forums. Um, so I thought, you know what, I might as well come on, you know, answer it, say hi to everybody. Um, and hopefully this is going to be uh, the beginning of more sort of videos there's such a backlog of content that i need to send out or do and videos that i need to make um i just haven't had the time it's been so busy with work and yeah it's been a bit crazy um but i am alive i'm still well thank you for everybody who sent all the uh, sort of well wishes or questions asking where i was uh i am here and for those of you that was ho hoping you know those are going to be the last of my videos i'm sorry to say i'm back <laughs> So yeah, anyway, um, hooking up your uh, DL uh, Mackie mixer to a uh, to a door. Um, yeah, the process should be pretty straightforward. I know with some doors, most of the main ones, it should be just plug and play. But with some digi digital audio workstations, you might find that um, you might find that you know there's there's some complications in some of the settings or the way in which the door has been made. Um, you know, you'd have to sort of deal with that on an individual basis. Uh, but just for the purposes of just hooking up your DL mixer, your Mackie mixer using Master Fader, um, obviously I, I bought the 32S. So obviously it's going to be Master Fader 5 for me um, upwards. I'm currently running 5.1.1. Um, but yeah, it's pretty straightforward. I'll show you what it is. I've got a couple of doors on my laptop. Um, and people keep laughing at the way I say door. Um, they say I'm, it sounds like I'm saying door as in D-O-D-O-O-R. And I'm saying door as in D-A-W. Um, but yeah, I've got a couple here. Um, so with reason, all you need to do is hook up your USB. Uh, I think it's a type B cable. What are these? Printer cables. I call them printer cables, USB printer cables. But you hook that up one to your uh, Mackie. And then you hook the other one up to your laptop or your desktop. Um, open up your digital audio workstation. And generally with Mac, and normally under um, Windows, you'll find the Preferences option under Edit. And it'll be somewhere towards the bottom. But with uh, Windows, you'll have to click on the actual program name. And that's where Preferences tends to appear. So even if you go into the Apple logo, System Preferences is there. But yeah, s click on that. Uh, just go into Preferences. And what you need to do is look for audio preferences. Um, so here's the audio preference for me. Uh, you've got built-in output. And within that, you should find on your drop-down list your DL32S, provided you've installed all the correct drivers, etc. Uh, this is not going to be a driver's video. Um, but if you need more on that, just go on the Mackie website or look at some of the videos that um, are out there. But it's a pretty straightforward thing. Anyway, select your device. And once it's selected, that's pretty much it. I've never really had to mess with all the latency settings, etc. Um, in some cases with different uh, um, s USB interfaces, you may find that you might need to, you know, click on some of these options to increase the amount of outputs uh, to the inputs that are there. Uh, but with the reason it was just straightforward plug and play, everything was read um, directly from the device. And uh, I mean, you'll already start to see here that Reason is picking up a signal. And within Reason, it's actually pretty straightforward. Where you create your track, I create audio track. Um, on the actual audio track itself, you'll see two things. Um, if you click on In, um, it'll give you the option to choose between stereo and mono. With other um, doors, it's a bit more tricky where you've got one or two more clicks that you need to do to find this. Uh, but with Reason, it's pretty straightforward if you want stereo. And what Reason does is it picks up the mapping that is inbuilt within your uh, mixer. So obviously, we know on the Mackie DL32S, 
the uh, Mackie series, the DL series, um, the internal system is rigged to work in such a way that you can only link one and two, three and four, five and six. You can't do two and three. So if I go back into uh, into Master Fader, you'll see there straight away, you can only assign channel one over to two. If you go to channel two, you can only do two back to one, but you can't do, um, you see, three will only go into four, and four will only come back. So you can't have a situation where you do two, three, and you can't have a situation where you do five and six, uh, four and five. Um, it'll always come back. And likewise, uh, most doors should do this, but Reason's automatically picked up on that and it's automatically done the mapping for you. So you don't make the mistake of manually mapping, you know, two channels that would never ever work together. I have a different mixer as well. Uh, it's a M18 RCF, M18, yeah. And uh, the mapping there for channels, so seven maps to ten, uh, nine maps to 10, 11 to 12, 13 to 14, 15, 16, and 17 and 18 and those are the only ones that you can map together um it's crazy so the other ones you can't um so you see how it can get interesting but yeah it's pretty much it to be honest um you can choose between stereo and mono mono and stereo and the reason why this is important just to let you guys know it's so that you know where to plug your items in so if you have like a keyboard you want left and right you don't just randomly look at the mix and say oh yeah Channels uh, fifth, uh, 16 and 17 are free. I'll just plug them into there. You won't be able to link them here. Okay? So I'm going to come out of this. What else do we have here? We've got garage band. Now some will argue that's not a real door. Whatever. Um, so yeah, to get garage band going, um, open it up. You know, you've got all your inputs. And as I mentioned earlier on, on Reason, where you have the input, you can do this. But with garage band, you have to so sort of select you know what you want beforehand i think this will be the same with uh is it pro tools the uh the real version or the real door whereas this one's considered to be a toy uh there you go so you just uh map that across um and it's the same thing really you go into preference ah here we go so this isn't so preference change it across to the dl32 it did whatever it did and it's done you don't have to worry about anything else. You come here, and there you go. Boom. Um, let me see if I can add a new track here and see if it gives me the option to... So yeah, I can't choose here whether I want stereo or... You know, if I've already picked the uh, the track and I want to change it to a stereo track or... You know, it doesn't seem to give me the same sort of versatility that uh, Reason has. And reason, I think I have reason eight. Um, but yeah, there you go. Give it duplicate settings. Anyway, I don't read, I don't use um, GarageBand. So, you know, I don't need to, but this I like about, you know, just it's nice and easy. It doesn't have a lot on there. Um, but yeah, it's pretty straightforward if you want to hook up your device. And then you're pretty much, um, again, here I can't pick. So if I go back to reason, for example, and it lets me pick. I can change it one channel. So you know what I used, I used to do with my recordings is if I plug, say, a guitar into channel 18 and I record my guitar bit, I would then create a new track, take out the end of the guitar out of there, plug a bass into it, um, and then I would come here, create a new track, and literally whilst it's still on channel 18, I'd select the very same channel 18, and then I'd record a bass track using the exact same jack-to-jack -jack cable. And it's very straightforward, very simple to do. Pick 18. This could already be on 18 as well. Uh, but I would have already recorded something else on there. And I can just keep using the same track if I'm doing uh, all the recording myself. Because, you know, obviously I play several instruments. So, um, And you don't get that with GarageBand. I'm not too sure whether it's the same with this Logic or Pro Tools. I'm not sure. Logic? I think it might be Logic. Uh, whether you have those options here where you can just quickly do the same thing. Uh, but it's pretty straightforward. I mean, I'm not going to ramble on too much about this um, because it's it's pretty straightforward. Obviously, you guys will already know 
if you want to be able to send multiple drives, because this is obviously just coming out through USB uh, within Master Fader. If you go to the USB part, um, sorry, excuse me. We've already spoken about this, uh, so this this much you should already know because I've already discussed this. But if you wanted your USB one and two, so your USB port on your the physical USB port on your DL mixer, um, gets its left and right from USB one and two. So USB one is left. USB 2 is right. And um, if you want to be able to get more channels than just uh, channel, you know, whatever channels you, you assign to USB 1 and 2. So, you know, you could assign mic pre 5 and mic pre 9, but you can only have two channels at a time. And for some people, that's fine. If they only need the one or the two channels simultaneously, that's fine. Um, but if you want to be able to have all your channels on your desk hooked up so that they all go through and you can control the different volume levels you can send them post dsp or pre dsp so that's with you know all the effects and the processing the eq etc and without so if it's pre dsp um, it'll only take whatever gain settings you've set up here so remember to turn the gain up to actually send some signal out to the desk like i'm currently doing here um uh but if it's pre uh, sorry if it's uh pre dsp then it will pick up more than just how much gain you've set on it it'll also pick up other items on that channel so if you've uh set yourself up like i have where you've sent uh what you're sending to usb 1 and 2 your left and right is information from um in this case i'm using aux 7 and 8 um, my aux channels so seven is going to usb one that's left eight is going to usb two that's right um, then you can come out of this um, obviously i've linked seven and eight together so that i don't have to go into one do a change go into the other do a change if you link them together then you know that means you've got left and right and you can do all your changes just on the one um, mixer display so to speak so I link the two together. This is aux uh, seven and eight, and now um, I can now start to send every other channel. If I have it um, uh, post DSP, um, so um, if I have it post DSP like it is now, um, any effects, EQ, etc., will go through for all the channels, and you can send all the channels you have here all of them including the fx you can group things you can say you pretty much have full control over what you're sending and i'll just show you a quick example because I, I currently have mine going um post to dsp so you should be able to hear i think i have something on the reverb ah there you go yeah so you should be able to hear some some reverb so if you are doing a recording session and you want to send some of that across um then you've got that option there as well um so it's entirely up to yourself how you want to use it but you know like i say i always say master fader is very customizable and i know probably every, every other mixer can do the same thing but can it do it as well as master fader um <laughs> and i like to differentiate between master fader and mackie even though i know master fader belongs to mackie but the physical product that mackie made and the software master fader um i love master fader um in terms of build quality the, the physical dl i've got the 32s it's decent um i like it it's quiet it's good for studio etc um but there are some features that leave a little bit to be desired um but there's always room for improvement um so yeah i love master fader i wish i could take that up and i could use it for some of my other digital mixes it's the best thing out there um, but anyway, I'll end this here now. Speak to you guys um, another time. Peace.